Hey, I just had some popcorn. Get yours out. We got a good conversation coming up here tonight. Yeah, so if I gag a little bit during the show, it's because Jess threw this, uh, th- you know, you, we were sitting around the studio. Do you, know that we, do you know that we have a popcorn machine in the waiting room of this broadcast? And anybody who comes as a guest gets treated to popcorn if, it, if they like to have it. So just another reason why you may want to join the Dan York Show for a conversation on any particular evening. Actually, state of mind, as we call it. It's great to have you in. Thank you very much for tuning in tonight. Um, I'm a little loosey-goosey because this evening I'm not offering a rundown. We're not going down the list of items because it's either an off day, a vacation day, a holiday. And uh, for those of you who've been watching the show since inception in September of uh, 2013, you know that uh, we have these programs from time to time. And the nice thing about it is it gives me a chance to kind of relax, sit back, and talk to people who are interesting and doing great work or have something, you know, kooky or novelty to, to discuss. And uh, I want you to know that you can, uh, you can volunteer to talk about the things that you think are kind of cool about your organization or uh, a project you're working on simply by uh, contacting us through uh, your state of mind, which, of course, comes up at the end of the broadcast, but you could kind of figure out how to get a hold of us, right? MyRI TV, Lynn Television, you know, we hang out at the Channel 12 studios. So, with no further ado, uh, tonight we're going to be talking about volunteerism here in Rhode Island and an organization called Serve Rhode Island, which is Serve RI, which, you know, does stuff like this, get people out to shovel sidewalks and driveways when the need is here. So you're probably seeing this uh, broadcast in the latter portion of uh, the winter, perhaps early spring, and I don't need to remind you of the kind of winter that it has been and the kind of winters that we generally have here. So, uh, you know, that's just some of the kind of work that gets done. Bernie Boudreau is the executive director of Serve RI. Welcome, sir. Great to have you. Great to be here. I understand that you passed on the popcorn. You I th- did, yeah. Did? I didn't want to get stuck in my <laughs> teeth or anything, yeah. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I didn't, so, you know, I hope nothing flies out at you. Um, this is a kind of a cool organization. Uh, near a million-dollar budget, uh, coordinating, really, volunteer services for the entire state of Rhode Island. That's right. Talk to me about it. Well, we do that in a number of ways. We, um, we have special projects that we recruit volunteers for, like the snow shoveling. When we have a snow event, we know there's a lot of elderly and disabled that uh, really haven't had that help. And so we put the word out. This TV station has been wonderful in helping to get the word out. Um, in January, we recruited 55 volunteers, and they shoveled out 133 homes for elderly. And, um, you know, the people were very grateful for that. So we're, we're going to try to keep that going by having a, a community core, we're going to call it, you know, and of people who are on the ready to kind of do that. Um, we, so you uh, have 55 yeah. volunteers yeah. for 130 folks. So what happens? Folks kind of let you know they are of need. And yeah, you what they have, do. You keep a roster they, of that. That's right. They call United Way 211 to say that I need some help. And uh, we put all that up on a Google Doc, right? So we can look at the document. We can see the residents uh, who want help. And then we're recruiting volunteers. So that comes through our website. They go to our website and they sign up. Uh, we ask for a photo ID and we do a quick background check and if they pass um, we put them up and we match them up geographically with the uh, with the elderly. We had uh, a whole bunch of volunteers do five and six homes. Actually I did five myself <laughs> to kind of get a feel for it. Mm. The last uh, home that I shoveled was uh, a woman who was calling me from the window and I was waving you know because our rule is you don't need to engage with a resident just be outside they know you're there and um, she said, do you know I'm 100 years old? I said, well, you better stay inside. <laughs> it's a 100-year-old woman. Right. And um, she said, I usually try to do this myself. I said, please don't do that. <laughs> but there is that kind of a need. God, yeah. I wonder when she yeah. stopped. You know, last year, <laughs> I year before? Yeah, probably last night. You know, stop. when she was a lot younger at 98. <laughs> um, right. But, but that, right. just an example, I think, of some of the, the cool stuff you find when you're out there in the community, you know, acting out of the box, helping people, right? Yeah, and you know, what we do is try to provide opportunity for people to get involved, you know? Uh, a lot of times folks are re- reluctant to volunteer because they don't know where to go or, you know, how do you sign up and, you know, who do you talk to? Talk to us, go to our website, call us up, and we uh, will connect you with something of interest to you. 
you want to volunteer once a week, we have opportunities for that in schools, in nonprofit organizations. If you want to get involved with a, a spring cleanup project like we do, uh, Roger Williams Park um, Pond for the seven, seven years in a row now, we've had between 250 and 400 volunteers on Saturday morning. This year is going to be April 26th. Um, with these long rakes that we designed to kind of pull trash out of the ponds. You know, trash gets blown there over the winter, and, and unfortunately there's a lot of people who litter. But we have a crew of people that clean those, that whole pond area up in four hours. And we have uh, tons and tons of trash we pull out of there. There's another opportunity. You can do that once a year, feel good about it, bring your kids. Um, after storms like Hurricane Sandy, we had over 1,200 volunteers go down to Westley to help clean up the debris. So we're the conduit for that. So we're organized to get people placed and uh, so they have a good experience. So, you, so you're a primarily taxpayer-funded organization, correct? Uh, no, we're a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Okay, so people can contribute to your organization. We hope they will. <laughs> um, but you also have a, a major federal grant that you work with. We do. Our, between state and federal money, makes up 40% uh, of our budget. 60% of our budget is private monies. So a lot of what we do, we work with a lot of our Rhode Island corporations. Uh, there's several that uh, contract with us uh, to organize service projects for their employees. Uh, we have a, a major company, um, Fidelity Investments, who has put uh, hundreds of volunteers uh, in the schools, in the public schools, every summer for the last uh, five years. Hmm. And they can't do everything. They can't do plumbing. They can't really fix major things, but they're making the schools look a lot better. Painting. You know, it, it's 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 an interesting conversation because I I can tell you that I have sarcastically responded to listeners on the radio and viewers on the television from time to time who send me an email from Pluto, you know, <laughs> complaining about whatever. And when I'm bored with them, or so I. I Listeners to the radio show probably will remember at some juncture that after listening to somebody just blow hard on the radio, I'd just say, you know what, why don't you go volunteer somewhere right. and, and make a better use of your time. So when we come back, I want to talk a little bit about, about the concept of volunteering, the history of it a little bit, and how Rhode Island actually fits in the volunteer rank. Stay with us. Some of the volunteering that went on uh, recently at uh, a local school on Martin Luther King Jr. Day, Bernie Boudreau is with us. His Serve Rhode Island is his organization, executive director, and it really is kind of the, the, the center place for all that is volunteer in Rhode Island. What were, they, what were the kids doing? What, what school was that? This is uh, Goff uh, Middle School in Pawtucket, um, almost 100 years old that school is. And this was a particular day we had AmeriCorps members. Now, Serve Rhode Island is the state commission for the AmeriCorps program. We have 14 different funded programs. And AmeriCorps is like uh, what we call the Domestic Peace Corps, where you give up a year uh, of service you know, to the community. And most of our um, AmeriCorps members work in education, pre-K, preschool, all the way to uh, college access kind of thing. We have a program that's got involved with environmental uh, education, uh, human services. Um, but on MLK Day, we call it a, it's a day on, not a day off. And so we provide uh, a sort of a big group project. So we had all of our AmeriCorps members there that day. Um, well, most of them, anyway, we had 170. And uh, so what Server Island's gotten pretty good at is uh, a five hour, six hour project for 170 people. Hmm. Planning that out, you know, everyone needs something to do, right? So right. we need paintbrushes and rollers. That's and organizational and work, man, right? Yeah, it really is and ladders, you know, and uh, every time we do one of these schools, I blow out my knee, but, um, you know, that's what it, we <laughs> Welcome to the club. Every time I get up, I blow out my knee, you know, so I know how it feels. So it's good to have more youthful uh, America members doing this, running up and down the stairs, and you'll find in one of these old middle schools that they don't have elevators, so if you're going to do the third floor, you got a lot of stairs to come up, and we're carrying these five-gallon buckets of paint. I think they're 50 pounds, so... It's good work. Well, you, bring, you, you bring up a really interesting point because I, I had a cocktail uh, with, a, with a gentleman I had not seen for a while, retired, who
who's now got a lot of free time on his hands and is volunteering at a couple of different places, not through your organization, but just, yeah. um, you know, at a local church thing. And he was frustrated as all get out because mm -hmm. he was saying, you know what? You know, I go there on Tuesday and Thursday and there's nothing to do. Oh, yeah. And then, and then you, know, uh, you know, on a day that, uh, you know, I can't show up, they need some help. And, and it, it's just not well organized. And you know what? I, you know, I'm not trying to be a prima donna here, but, you know, my time is valuable. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if I show up, I expect... And he was very frustrated, perhaps right. more frustrated than he was with his entire professional career. Right. So you know, people take volunteering very seriously. They do. And you've got to make the most of what it is that people can avail themselves for, right? Well, that's right. And there are all kinds of volunteer jobs if you want to volunteer. Some people have a career as an engineer, and what they would like to do is sort food at the food bank. They don't want to do the engineering work anymore. But other people, retired, want to use their skills, particularly in management, finance, human resources, uh, in a nonprofit that can use their help. So we actually have developed a skills-based volunteer program hmm. where it's almost like a professional outplacement um, process where we interview candidates for particular jobs and nonprofits. And these jobs might be 10 hours a week or maybe one 40-hour project start to finish. And we recruit for these jobs and um, talk to people and make sure we match the expectations of the volunteer with the expectations of the nonprofit. We make the nonprofit do their homework, design a job description, figure out the work, and have a place in the organization for that volunteer. And it's a slow process. We don't do thousands of these. Uh, we, we're starting off trying to develop this because there's a lot of there are a lot of people that want to contribute. Well, I, I think you know I, I, I tease this by talking about the history of volunteers and everything, and we can talk about that a little bit. But since we're on this and having just a random conversation about it, this this concept of volunteering is not just you know, grandma's sidewalk. It, right. it, it's it's not just you know redoing a house and painting. It's it's those things, of course, and right. that's what you think of in a lot of ways. But it can be a very very high skill expertise mm -hmm. type of thing. So anybody's on the couch watching this thing, going, you know what, son of a gun, you know, I am pretty good at, at computer technology. Mm -hmm. I am pretty good at accounting. I am pretty good at this, at that. Da, 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 da. Um, we need I'll let them know yeah. about a skill set that I have as opposed to just heavy lifting somewhere. Exactly. Right? Yeah. More and more that's needed. And then <clears throat> the nonprofit community, you know, they can't pay for everything. There's not the same kind of charitable money and grants it used to be. So nonprofits have to get creative in terms of using volunteer talent. And that means you might need four volunteers to do the job of one full time person, but they're making that adjustment. And I think. Uh, it's a wise move because you're getting people with a great deal of experience and background, lifetimes of uh, experience. And um, the wiser nonprofits, that's what I like to say, are using this talent. And, um, you know, if we don't use that talent, it goes wasted. I mean, we both know a lot of retired folks. They have so much they want to still contribute, but there's no outlet for them. They don't know how to connect. Right. And, uh, and, they, and if they show up to a nonprofit that's not ready, they'll have the same experience as your friend. Yeah. And they'll say they'll be sitting around, they want to stuff envelopes. Well, no, I was an engineer. I can figure out how to do this, you know? Mm. So uh, creativity in the nonprofit community is um, kind of important. really important. All right, and when we come back, we will talk about how Rhode Island is doing. Right, take two on that. Uh, and, and, and really what the experience of volunteering you know, makes you feel like, because at the end of the day, there's really nothing like it. Stay with us. Now that's uh, part of the uh, Channel 12 WPRI crew that was uh, doing some work this past June. There's some very uh, familiar faces to me, some behind the scenes. Uh, that was Jacqueline there that was doing some painting who hooked Bernie up here before uh, you know, with his microphone, You've got to be careful as a, how you say hooked up. You know, but hooked up your microphone, and um, this this is a project that Channel 12 was involved with. Which was, what was this one? This was good. This was at Tri Town Community Action, and they had an area uh, that was um, kind of a dugout area with a big retaining wall, and they were in violation of the of the building code because any kid could jump off the wall or fall off the wall. So 
they said we need a wooden fence put around it and um, you know, I put on my engineering hat and did the measurements and luckily they were pretty good but when the crew came they dug all the holes put the posts in we put cement in the holes so that the, the posts would firm up nice and then we get the links in and they painted everything and it was an amazing project it was about I think 90 degrees by noontime. Mm. It's a okay. hot day. We drank a lot of water. Mm. And uh, so, if you've yeah. got so okay, so if you have a project, so here's it. We should put this up a couple of times. So can we put the graphic up, Rox? Just to the, so you contact Serve Rhode Island if you want to volunteer. You got to be specific or general about your volunteer interest, whatever. But if you have a specific skill, let them know. Uh, but if you need help. You need the snow shovel, you need the lawn mowed, da 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 that's one thing. But if you've got a project, yeah. you'll come out and take a look at it. And how do you determine whose project well, meets, meets your, your interest or your, your talent pool? Or There's a growing interest from particularly the corporate community, uh, and I include WPRI in that, uh, to have team projects. Anywhere from 15 to, well, in one case, 350 people in one day. That gets a little hairy, but uh, what was that? What was that? Fidelity. This is their transformation day. They 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 occupied Slater Middle School. We have a picture of that. I think that uh, uh, you can toss up if you get a chance, Ron. Yeah, yeah, that is an amazing work that they do. Some of the yeah, this is what they did at a Boys and Girls Club. It was a small project. They okay. had about 80 people that day. That was Fidelity. Yeah. So what we do is we go to the nonprofits and say. There's a real opportunity to engage the corporate community and to get some really useful things done for your nonprofit. And a lot of nonprofits are so used to being penny, you know, pinching pennies, and they don't really see the opportunity. So we go there and say, hey, you know, do you know you could fix those walls up a little bit, or you know, some landscaping over here? Have you thought about having a garden in the back? You know, so we plant these ideas and get them to think about it. R Rhode Island's um, performance in the volunteer. across the country comparisons right. not that good it's improving slightly but it's been at 40 41 uh, percent of the pop, uh, ranking 41 to, to 39 ranking uh, in the country meaning we are the 39th worst you know uh, percentage in terms of volunteering we have a 24 percent volunteer rate nationally it's 26 Connecticut's like 31 percent Massachusetts 26 so we don't know why. Meaning that percentage <coughs> of the population yeah. volunteers. How do you track of the that? eighteen plus? Now this is done. Do you track by, my volunteer work. How, do, how would you know? If you get, it's a sampling. It's a national okay. sampling of sixty thousand households in September. It's part of the so U.S. Census. So it's good census. data. Yeah, as good as the census is. Okay. And um, there are about two thousand Rhode Island households that get selected for this for the interviews, and um, so we get that percentage, and um, what it amounts to is. Why are we not doing well? I don't know, and it might be that we're not offering enough opportunity. Maybe, you know, that I don't know. But people are working too hard. But um, I wonder if if a, if a high unemployment rate and a tough economy totally are 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 linked to a lack of volunteerism. Absolutely, nationally, that's very true. Um, you would think people have time on their hands; they want to volunteer, stay active, stay you know, build their resume. But people are too worried about, you know, getting the next job. You can, you know, people who volunteer are, are generally comfortable in their financial situation. They're right. comfortable with their employment, and so they feel relaxed enough to be able to give up their time. So that's a very true statement. But you know what it amounts to? If we were at the national percentage, there'd be 17,000 more Rhode Islanders engaged. So think of what that means in terms that's of a lot of work. impact. Yeah. Think of all the kids who could be helped meeting. Think of all the projects that we could be doing. Mm. So that's what Rhode Island is not giving to itself, and it has no cost. You know, we, we always think everything costs money and budget. Uh, we, did, we are not giving to ourselves. We're not giving of our own time to right. our So as, as the executive director of this really important organization, you know, talk to me for just a minute or so about you know, what you've seen in terms of the return on investment for people's time. And, and, you know, listen, anybody that's volunteered for anything knows at the end of it, you feel like a million dollars. It is absolutely one of the most rejuvenating experiences you can have when you finally get out of yourself yeah. and take care of something or somebody else for no charge, right? Well, I can see it better than that. I mean, that's, um, you, know, you know what the, the paradox is that 
anticipating having to get out and get involved with unknown people and unknown organizations, you know, people are really resistant. And once they get past that barrier, they, they wonder why they didn't do it earlier. It's actually a good place to find a date sometime, well, right? I think so. No, yeah, no, I think for people who are looking to network socially and just, you know, you may find that special someone slamming a hammer next to them somewhere. Yeah, well, like volunteer.com, you know, right. you know match.com. Yeah, there a lot of relationships have developed. And none that I know of, but I... <laughs> but uh, people oh, that do you have want a to admit time. to, but, you know, it's yeah. a... But no, it's, it's a... <laughs> Like, we could talk all day about this. I, I hope that you didn't find this program to be kind of, you know, whatever, because it really is at the core. Um, it says a lot about us, how well our volunteer rate is going and how much work can be done. Yeah. Can you imagine another 17,000 people that go to this site and say, yeah. look, uh, I saw Bernie on TV. He's right. I need to get in, and I can do this, and so I shall help. And, of course, if you need some help or you need a project, uh, let us know. Uh, your final thought, 10 seconds. Really? Kids in school needed an extra adult to help them get through their reading or their math. We know we need that help. We need people to step up, and I hope okay. they do. All right. Good to see you. Good to see Thanks you. Thanks for your good work. Thank you. All right. Uh, your state of mind when we come back. Stay with us. That volunteering thing really will make your heart sing, so consider, really, consider doing that. The, because this is a pre-recorded program on a previous date, we don't have specific response on your state of mind, but we remind you that you can always get in touch with us. Uh, send us a voicemail by just calling the number. It's kind of like just pick up the phone, say what you got to say, and it, oh, it appears right on the TV. Email me at stateofmindatmyritv.com, and of course you can tweet and Facebook post at Dan York Show. It is always an honor and a pleasure to have you watching The Dan York Show. Uh, most likely, the next broadcast we have will be timely. Back to the rundown, and back to the business of exploring my state of mind and yours on Meyer TV. Good night.